Why did all types of ancient people die out except Homo sapiens? According to the laws of the evolutionary development of a living nature, competition is usually won by a more adapted and stronger species. We are now the only human species on the planet, but at the dawn of their appearance, our distant ancestors had to withstand serious competition with other contenders for the title of King of Nature. In this video, we'll talk about who else lived and developed in parallel with our species and why the Cro-Magnons turned out to be stronger and more successful. If you like the videos that are released on the Dinosaur Age channel, then you can help promote them. To show our videos to many viewers as possible, you just need to like the videos that you like. We encourage our viewers to actively subscribe to the channel and share their opinion in the comments. If natural disasters and other factors do not come into play, then those animals and plants quickly adapt with their change in living conditions and develop adaptations that are absent from the opponent should they win in the struggle for survival. The main weapon of our distant ancestors turned out to be a more developed intellect and a high level of socialization. Also, our development was strongly affected by the constant change in conditions in the course of settling around the planet. All kinds of people who could compete with the Cro-Magnons appeared on Earth long before them. And by the time a new kind of people came into their territory, they had a serious head start in preparing for the struggle for a place under the sun. They had already adapted to climate conditions, developed their own survival strategy, learned how to use and make various necessary tools. It is believed that thanks to their developed brains, the Cro-Magnons quickly adopted and improved the necessary skills from the indigenous inhabitants, and then they were simply forced out to move to severe habitats. Moreover, this displacement did not take place in the form of an armed clash. Just because of its sociality and mass character, the Cro-Magnon society quickly developed territories and resources and the locals were forced to be content with the remnants or move to a new place. At different times and in different parts of the planet, simultaneously with representatives of the species Homo sapiens, from five to eight other types of people lived on Earth. Different groups of scientists classify these species in different ways, sometimes separating them, sometimes combining them into common groups. All these species had a common ancestor, but at some point, the branches of their development were divided. Also, scientists cannot always accurately indicate the time of residence of these related species. So, it's not at all a fact that they died out with the help of our distant ancestors. According to the various estimates, the Cro-Magnons appeared on the territory of the African continent from 100 to 200,000 years ago. And about 50,000 years ago, they left Africa and began their settlement around the world. And after 30,000 years, not a single parallel developing human species remained on Earth. All of them were either exterminated or driven back by the new masters of the planet to uninhabitable regions. Perhaps some of them were simply assimilated into the Cro-Magnon society. Evidence for this theory can be found in the presence of genes from other species in modern humans. Although, some scientists believe that we inherited these genes from common ancestors, different types of people could not interbreed among themselves. Cro-Magnons lived in groups of up to a hundred people. They knew how to build dwellings from skins or equipped dugouts. They could also live in caves. They dressed in skins. But one of the most important qualities of this kind of people was the ability to articulate and fully communicate with each other. This skill helped them hunt more organized. Therefore, the Cro-Magnons could jointly produce such a large prey as deer, mammoths, and other large mammals. In addition, these primitive people mastered the manufacturing of huge number of various useful devices and tools. A spear thrower helped them hunt better. A device capable of throwing a spear more than 100 to 120 meters. With the help of snares, it was possible to catch small animals and birds. And as for catching fish, harpoons and hooks were invented. An important addition to all of this was the domestication of domestic animals. Scientists say that around this time, the dog was domesticated by man. 
Findings related to the cultural life of the Cro-Magnons also speak of a high level of development. They left us a lot of art objects, drawing on the walls, decorations, and even children's toys. Scientists also talk about the rather complex funeral rites of our ancestors. All this means that primitive people could devote enough time to activities not related to the extraction of food and survival. What other types of people could oppose to this mass character and organization? Homo naledi Until recently, it was believed that the remains of one of the dead-end branches of mankind discovered in South Africa belonged to later eras, and these creatures died out long before the appearance of the first Homo sapiens. But recent studies have shown that these remains are only 200 to 300,000 years old. So these primitive people could theoretically meet with the first representatives of our species. Unfortunately, apart from the bones and skulls of Homo naledi, scientists have not found any other finds. In the cave where they rested, there are no traces of any tools, clothing, or other organic matter. Most likely, these creatures were closer to the Australopithecus. Their hands were adapted for moving through trees, and the structure of their legs made it possible to make long transitions and run well. Heidelberg Man It is believed that this species could be the link from which the separations of sapiens and Neanderthals began. Heidelberg Man outwardly looked like modern people, but the size of his brain was much smaller and inferior to ours, and his height could reach 175 centimeters. Distinctive features of the Heidelberg man were a massive brow ridge and the absence of chin protrusion, a thick walled skull, and a low forehead. Moreover, his dental arch practically did not differ from ours. According to various sources, this type of people originated in Africa from 800 to 500,000 years ago, and then also settled throughout Eurasia. It is believed that the African and European branches of the Heidelberg people were isolated from each other for a long time and developed independently. The last finds of the remains of this species date back to around 130,000 years ago. This means that at the dawn of their existence, they could well have interacted with our ancestors. Despite his outward appearance, the Heidelberg man was distinguished by his great ingenuity. Representatives of this species definitely knew how to use fire and make primitive tools. There is evidence that it was they who first began to use stone tips. Perhaps they knew of art and took care of the old and infirmed fellow tribesmen. They lived in groups of up to several dozen people and hunted together on large creatures. Floresian Man and Javanthropus in the process of settling the prehistoric ancestors of mankind, some groups of different anthropoid creatures found themselves in forced isolation on the islands. A striking representative of such a population are the inhabitants of the island of Java, who inhabited it about 100,000 years ago. In the process of their evolution, they acquired some unique features that made them a separate kind of people. But, like all closed populations, the Javanthropes were doomed to slow degradation and extinction. Most likely, given the abundance of food and the absence of dangers, they could not resist new predators or competitors that appeared on the island. The same fate befell the inhabitants of the island of Flores. Their degeneration was expressed in a decrease in the size of the body and brain. They appeared on this island about 1 million years ago and died out only about 50,000 years ago. But over the past 450,000 years of their existence, their brain had decreased by more than two times. Some researchers believe that their cause of their death could be a major eruption of a local volcano. It is also quite possible that for the last hobbits from Flores were destroyed by representatives of the Homo sapiens who, at the time, inhabited the island of the Pacific Ocean, heading towards the Australian continent. Denisov Man This species was discovered quite recently, 
and the Denisov Cave in Altai gave it its name. Now, it is believed that they lived through East Asia, but there is practically no data on their life and skills. It is only known that they had dark skin, dark hair, and large teeth. There is evidence that they could have had common offspring with Neanderthals. Denisovan genes have also been found in the DNA of modern humans. Therefore, it is quite possible that the Denisovans were assimilated by another species. Neanderthals The confrontation between these relatives and ours and the ancient Cro-Magnons is written not only in school textbooks. A lot of believable and not very artistic films have been shot about this topic. It can be reliably said that Neanderthals, before the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe, survived quite normally in these harsh places. They knew how to sew clothes from skin, made devices for hunting and everyday life, mastered the arts, and possessed the rudiments of religion. It is very likely that the more intellectually developed Cro-Magnons, whose tribes were larger, simply forced the Neanderthals to look for new places to live. It is also possible that a general cooling of the climate began at this time, and they simply could not cope with the changes that had occurred. Among the finds of the remains of this species, about 90% of the bones belonged to children. Most likely, this species simply died out due to hunger and deprivation. But our distant ancestors also played a role in this extinction. Thanks to our viewers who watched this video to the end. If you're interested in how life developed in the future, then you can learn about it on our other videos on our channel.